Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, uh, the weekend winners edition. Time to welcome in our Browns analyst, Jake Burns from the Orange and Brown Report. Uh, breaks down film, does a great job. Jake, appreciate the time very much. Uh, obviously, Sam Darnold not under center. Trevor Simeon is under center for the Jets. It's a guy who's played in the league, but uh, what do you see uh, that doing for the Browns defense? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to take the pressure off of them, and, and especially with Simeon, who's who's not a quick processor, doesn't have the arm Sam Darnold does, and he hasn't hasn't functioned as a as an out of the pocket guy uh, successfully like Sam has either. So it's just going to be a very vanilla scheme uh, among you know the Le'Veon Bell injury, among the few other knick knack injuries they have there on the defense. But offensively, they should be able to bottle them up. But I expect a really safe game plan like the Titans threw out last week. So. It's good that the Browns have that on tape and a feel for how to how to defend those things. So they just have to play sound football and 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 win at the point of attack and keep their emotions in check. When you look at um, at Le'Veon Bell, uh, obviously, you know people still have that uh, screenplay to to uh, Derrick Henry in their minds, and Le'Veon Bell is a whole lot more dangerous in um, in the passing game. Is that a concern for the Browns defense? They really have never struggled uh, all too much with defending, you know, receiving backs. It's tight ends that give them some fits. So uh, I'm not overly worried about it. I know Le'Veon's going through an MRI today. He might not even play. So we're just going to have to kind of play that you know, close to the air. But I do expect if he does play, they're going to keep him, to, you know, as a big part of their game plan, you know, keep him uh, as active as possible. But the Browns are going to have to, you know, sort of throttle down on those screenplays, make themselves aware of what's going on with those. If you're getting to the quarterback without someone touching you, there's probably a reason. So hopefully they can keep those emotions in check, slow down a little bit, get to keep a feel for some of those screenplays because I expect the Jets will use, uh, you know, the, the Titans had three screenplays that, that were very close to breaking before they broke the 75 yard or so. You know, everybody on the Browns schedule should be making that a big part of their, their plan, especially with the aggressive front four the Browns have. When you look at the penalties, um, obviously a concern, 18 of them for over 180 yards. How many of them were basically on the players. A lot of people want to say it's undisciplined, it's the coach. At some point in time, professional athletes have to realize they're hurting the team. And a lot of those were those flavor of penalties. Yeah, I think I counted only three. I went through each one and broke it down for the OBR. I think only three of them were sort of questionable officiating type of calls. It was the uh, you know, the pass interference on Odell Beckham I thought was iffy. I thought the, the crack block there, the blind side call on um, Greg Robinson was a little bit iffy and then there was a false start that I thought was a little strange in nature but for the most part they're all on the Browns they're all player discipline two roughing the passers milestone a punch Greg Robinson you know kicking somebody they have to keep those emotions in check and then they have to know that in open space you cannot hang on somebody's jersey too many holding calls happened in the second half just by lazy approach or not knowing that a ball could be bounced back in your direction outside and you cannot hold someone's jersey. It was very obvious right in front of the official. So they just have to clean it up. I mean, you know, I think if you cut out some of the the, the goofiness that was the, the personal fouls and the rough passers, you get out of five, six penalties. So, you know, I mean, 10 penalties is never good, but at the same time, you can, you could live with that in a game. So they're going to, they're just going to have to figure out, um, you know, some of those angle things with blocking. And then I just don't think that we're going to see those mental mistakes again. And uh, you have to expect a regression to the mean with penalties there. When you look at a, a Greg Williams defense, how big of an advantage is it that he's somewhat familiar with the Browns personnel, at least Baker Mayfield? And what do you expect from Greg Williams defense uh, with the Jets? Well, I think it works both ways. I think it's good for the Browns that they've played against Greg's defense. I watched the week one tape, and it, that, that defense is very similar to what he ran in Cleveland. It, it's, it's you know, single high safety, cover one, cover three, and then he'll run two high, cover two with a deep middle running linebacker. They ran C.J. Mosley in that Tampa two, which was sending your middle linebacker deep down, down the field to run with anybody going down the middle of the field. It's all the same. Now, I do think he'll mix some things up. He'll do some things different. Uh, he'll do some exotic blitzes to try to confuse Baker. I expect him to play a lot of his own. He knows the Browns well, but the Browns know him well, and they're dealing with a dinged-up group. Quinn and Williams dealing with the ankle. Obviously, Jamal Adams is dealing with a sore body this week, too. Some, there's just advantages everywhere for the Browns, so I expect the Jets to try to be uh, quirky in approach to try to make up for that. When you look at Steve Wilkes' defense, what, how concerned are you with it? There were some good things, and then when the game got out of hand – you know, short field, pick six, made it a lot uglier than it was. 
Yeah, I think that I, I was fine with it. I was fine with their approach. They just have to play better. I think at some point the players have to play better. Denzel Ward was atrocious. They have to play better. They have to take away some of those easy things that are right in front of them. And I just think that they thought they were going to show up and win that football game, and they didn't use technique sound uh, you know, s- football in, in terms of keeping inside leverage as a corner, stop holding off of breaks, you know, defensive linemen over-pursuing or hitting the quarterback late. They, they're good enough. They played well for the most part. I thought they bottled up Tennessee pretty well. They have an immense amount of talent. It's going to happen for them. They just have to trust their coaching and trust the skill. Uh, was it a good sign that Schobert and Kirksey were two of the leading tacklers uh, for that defense in game one? Yeah, they were all over the field. I thought they played pretty well. They had some mental lapses late there with tight end coverage, but yeah, I was I was impressed with how they defended the run. I thought Schobert played well, tackled well, uh, but they have to cover tight ends still. They're still struggling to cover tight ends with any sort of deception that happens from the opposing offense, so they have to anchor that down, and they have to know who's responsible for for those tight ends, especially when teams play two or three tight ends, which I think the Jets might do the same thing to help with protection and uh, sort of keep that cautious game plan that we saw Tennessee run. When you, uh, when you look at that offensive line, you know, we had talked about that a couple of times. How concerned are you now? Um, and really, you know, Hubbard was the guy that I thought just didn't play very well, to be honest with you. And I know he switched from right to left, but it didn't matter where he was. He was getting beat wherever he lined up. Yeah, I mean, it was fluky. They had to move a guy uh, one side to the other, and then they, they obviously uh, had to bring in Kendall Lamb. He gets hurt on the first play. So, um, you know, it's just the, the, the interior played well. The tackles have to play better. But they're also not going to be behind the sticks on third and 12, 13, 14, long second downs where teams know they're forced to throw. And in those situations, you can balance out a little bit of deception, and hopefully the line can, can sort of anchor. I don't think it's as bad as people think. Um, but it, it was it was certainly not good. Uh, the last thing I'll ask you, what do you see as keys? If if you were going to say if, if the Browns can do these couple of things, they'll get the result they want on uh, on Monday night. Well, I think they needed to bottle up and blitz the run game. I think they needed to attack Le'Veon Bell on the run game. Buffalo did a really good job of that. With Sam playing, I thought they needed to blitz occasionally to force him into some trap coverages like, like Buffalo did. But now it's just going to be, to me, it's just going to be playing sound defense, keeping everything in front of you, and uh, bottling up the run game as you as you should be able to, and just not getting beat over the top, playing safe defense, but using the skill you have to take advantage of those mismatches along the Jets' offensive line. And then offensively, it's just going to be about a methodical approach. Take shots downfield when you have them because you'll have those shots, and then it, it's taking care of the football. I think they just take care of the football. The skill is that much better, and they should be fine. I, I'm going to sneak one more in. Are, are you surprised they didn't run Nick Chubb a little bit more? Um or, or did that, yeah. is that dictated by, by the way the game was going? Yeah, it's probably dictated by the way it was going. They were in a little bit of catch-up mode, and uh, they kept putting themselves behind the sticks. And when you do that, you eliminate runs on second and third down. And you can only run so many times if you're not picking up downs in general. So if you're only running three plays, you know, maybe five, six plays on average to drive, you're just not going to have enough run opportunities. And um, I think they're going to really try to fix that this week and try to go into this one with the plan of, we're going to let Nick run 18 to 20 times this game and really have him lead what we expect we can branch off of uh, that run game and really make him a big factor. I would expect in that coaching office they're sitting there talking about how can we get Nick involved early and often and stay in front of third and long situations. As always, great stuff. Jake Burns, our Browns analyst from the Orange and Brown Reports.